This is a dead rose. Literally, listen. I've been trying to reserve it because I got it from someone really sweet, so. Does anyone else like to keep dead flowers or is it just me? Thumbs up if you like this whole pink look that I've got going on. I decided I wanted to do some protective styling with my hair, so you won't be seeing blue hair for a while on this channel. Um, yeah. <laughs> Literally, if you're actually wondering what just happened, I dropped my phone. Yeah, I could have sworn this thing, this thing has fallen on the ground and smashed throughout the four years that I've had this phone and it's still alive. It needs a hug. I love you. Phone. So, um, yeah, if you're back watching this video, then I'm guessing you really like my last video. Give me a thumbs up if you really like my last video. For the first time, I'm doing something different with this channel, and I think I'm gonna wanna stick with this. So today, I'm actually going to be reading my cringeworthy fan fictions on Wattpad. This one goes by the name of Forbidden Attraction, and it stars dancers called Les Twins, or Le Twins. I used to be a really big fangirl of these guys. I still am, they're amazing dancers. You guys should check them out. But the only reason why I'm sharing this story with you is because it's embarrassing. I wrote these when I was 14, so don't judge me. I think reading back on it is quite okay. I think I was pretty, I was a pretty good writer. I'm not gonna lie, I think I was. That's all for you to judge. So if you like <laughs> this cringeworthy fan fiction reading of mine, stay tuned and um, I will put a, a edit of the scrolling on here on the side or whatever so you can read it with me or if you just like to listen to my voice then you listen to my voice but um yeah enjoy the video I recommend you grab any form of snack like popcorn juice water drink I don't know grab some water this is all I have left of my my voice it's really sad. I might as well just drink it now, actually. It's hard. It's lip gloss. Let's get to it. So, in the introduction, it has like a little plot. What happens when innocence meets its worst enemy? 16 is an innocent number, right? Well, Brianna is the type you would call innocent. She gets haunted by her tainted background Abuse being her best friend throughout high school and lonely being her second. She craved only one thing in her life which she never received growing up. It's four simple letters. Love. What happens when Brianna becomes friends with wrong people and gets involved with two of the most wanted? Two exotic, identical brothers named Larry and Laurent. My French accent was horrible. Laurent? Bourgeois. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad at reading, but I'm so good at writing. Well, I, I was. Brackets, both 26 years of age. Sense danger yet? Brianna's weak and vulnerable. What happens when she gets so drawn in her new surroundings that the word escape in her mind doesn't exist anymore? Find out the answer to the first question? No? <laughs> well, read Forbidden Attraction to find out more. If you guys like that and like, <laughs> If there was any form of suspense going through your mind, just comment down below if you like it so far. I'm going to only be reading chapter 1 and chapter 2, so... Or maybe just chapter 1, because it's quite long, so yeah. Like I said, I'll insert like an edit of what I'm reading so you'll be able to see some pictures. These are all people off of Google, so if you see yourself in this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so chapter 1, the introduction. Forbidden Attraction by Brigitte Denver, chapter 1. In the inner suburbs of Pr great start. In the inner suburbs of France, there was a very important meeting between Paris's worst nightmare, the most wanted gang out there. 
Today of all days they chose this one. Why? Because today was going to be the beginning to a never ending forever. The day innocence meets its worst enemy. Conflict, corruption. So this is the first character, Bri Brianna's point of view. This is like um, the main character. Please don't hurt me. I'm sorry. Take what you want, but don't hurt me. I said in fear as the dark shadow casted over me. I sat knees nested in my chest and eyes bloodshot red. I told you many times, Brianna, that I don't like any other person opposite your gender except me to hang with you, the unfamiliar figure said to me in a tamed but yet forced calm tone. Who are you? What do you want? I panicked, then looked up to see what looked like my long-term boyfriend, Lorenzo. I couldn't really make out his face since it was dark in a room. Lorenzo, he wasn't your average 19-year-old teenager. He and I had been dating slightly over two years now. We've been having an on and off relationship since recently Lorenzo had gone to rehab for crack addiction and for being abusive towards me. Whenever I really thought about it, I never really understood why I couldn't let go of him since he had treated me like shit for over the past two years. I still loved him. Now I was sitting balled up in my house corridor, crying, trying to protect myself from him. The anonymous figure chuckled at my words, heartless towards my cries, whimpers, and seeming not bothered, and that showing in his tone of voice he spoke to me in. I saw you after school with Daryl Shea Curtis today, and must I say, you both seemed real happy together. He paused, looked down and shook his head. Seriously, Rihanna? Why you wanna play me like that, huh? He said, crouching down to reveal his face more clearly and stroked my cheek. Those eyes, those hazel eyes, piercing through my brown ones. That's when I knew. L Lorenzo? Oh my God, I'm so bad at acting. <laughs> Lorenzo? I stuttered slowly with my eyes growing big, my mouth falling agape, and all I could do was stare and wince from each stroke and touch he offered me. Well, Brianna, Baby, what's your explanation? He waited. Look, I really don't have to treat you like a stubborn little girl, but if that's what you want, then that's what you'll get. With that, Lorenzo rose up and harshly grabbed my arm, yanking me towards my bedroom door. Please, please stop. I'm sorry, it's not what it looked like. He offered to help me study with my biology, that's all. Nothing happened, I swear. I said, as I stood in my dark room, watching Lorenzo with his back to me, locking the door and turning around to slowly make his way to me. I continued to stare until he was directly in front of me, a little too close for my comfort zone. And that's when I knew what I was in for, my punishment. Lorenzo grabbed my arm and yanked me towards him and forcefully kissed me so that when he pulled away, I drew blood. He smirked at the sight, continued to hurt my lips <laughs> even more as time passed by, I could have sworn that we'd been standing there in the same spot for hours. He threw me across the room and then started to unbuckle his pants. That was it. Everything once again, my innocence was taken away from me. Brianna's point of view. The next morning I'd woken up to noise of thunder and sound of heavy rain hitting my bedroom roof. I slowly got up off my bed and slightly turned around to see the white bed sheet covered in my blood from how harshly Lorenzo handled me during our lovemaking session. I shook my head to get the flashbacks of last night out of my head and made my way to my bedroom to get ready for school. There the mirror stood. I looked at myself in the cracked mirror studying every one of my features while resting my hand on the sink. My eyes drifted to my lip that still had stains of dried and semi-dried blood on it. I shook my head as a single tear escaped from my left eye. I got a cloth and slightly dampened it with warm water and patted my lip with it. I wish this would all just end. You are strong. You will get through this. I quietly chanted to myself as I continued to stare myself in the mirror while cleaning myself up. 15 minutes later, I came out the bathroom and started looking through my closet for something decent to wear. I threw on some black sweats with a baggy gray jumper, Jordans and a black beanie. I decided to let my hair down for the day. At 6.45 a.m., I made my way towards my house's exit and left for school. Great. Another day at this shithole, I said sighing to myself as I neared my school's entrance. As I got closer and closer to the point where I was right in front of the, the doors, I took one final deep breath and exhaled before pulling the doors open and oddly it was quiet. That definitely creeped me out. An even more creepy part 
was that every girl I passed had their eyes literally glued to me. Without thinking, I ran as fast as I could to the girls' bathroom. There I took a moment to breathe and think. Am I missing something or maybe there's something on my face? I quietly asked myself, still not looking in the mirror. Truly wanting to know why all of a sudden the females of this shithole gave any fucks about me. I went into the toilet and locked the doors. I put the lid over the toilet seat and sat on it. Man, I can't wait to get out of this place. I buried my head in my hands until something scared the living daylights out of me. Tell me about it! This school sucks balls, and so does every fucking human being in it. An unfamiliar head swung over the top of the toilet, with their legs hooked over the back of the side of the room to keep them from falling. Looking up, I almost choked. <laughs> I could have sworn that I came here in here alone. I didn't understand how I didn't know that there was another being in the woman's room with me. At that moment, I really felt like going insane. The girl paused at my reaction and gave me a really look, slightly raising her left brow. She quickly snapped out of it and flopped from her previous position and landed in front of me, giving the biggest smile. And in that moment, honestly, I didn't know whether to awkwardly smile back or tell her to get out. So, how's it going, Omi? I really couldn't think of anything to say. Um... Uh, um, I shook my head and buried my head in my hands, shielding myself away from further embarrassment. Uh, okay? That's great! My day went exactly the same. Hey, look, let's get out of here. What do you say? Maybe that ought to make you feel better? I looked up at her, still seated on the toilet. It took me a while to take the girl's image in. She had tanned complexion, chest length, dark brown curly hair, with a beanie that wrote, Come this fuck down. Brown hazel eyes that almost seemed familiar, too familiar. Rosy plump pink lips with a little piercing on the side of her nose. She slightly shifted in the position she stood. Are you gonna come with me or stay here on this dirty ass toilet and stare at me for what seems to be eternity? Hate to say this to someone I just met, but you're creeping me out big time. My eyes shifted from the girl's face to her hands that was still awaiting an answer. I took her hand and smiled a little. I'm sorry. I'm not much of a people's person at first, I said getting up from the toilet seat with the help of the girl. There we go. I knew you would show that beautiful smile. Say homie, what's your name? Brianna. Hmm, Brianna. Brie. I like that better. I'll call you Brie. How old are you, Brie? Wait, don't answer that. You look about my age, 16, 17-ish. I stared at the girl in amusement. Did she really like to ask this many questions to a stranger? Ha, huh. I'll just have to find out for myself. Look, girl, I'm tired of thinking of you as that. So will you introduce yourself already? I asked the girl slightly chuckling, but awaited her answer. Oh, well, how rude of me. I'm sorry, Brie, my name's Leanne. And yeah, you would have guessed I'm 16. There's more to me, but I'm not saying all of that in this stinking place. Ugh, Brie, can we leave already or do you need to do you some business? Leanne said slightly agitated while placing her hands on her petite hips. It was quite funny when she was annoyed. Maybe I could find a friend in her. Maybe I already had. No, no, I don't have to do no business. Don't worry, we're leaving. And Leanne, that's a very unique name. I like it. Leanne and I made our way out of the girls' bathroom, and it seems as soon as we stepped out, reality truly hit. Girls were with their macho boyfriends and nerds with nerds, and there was a geek section, and I could have sworn I saw two girls making out in the girls' locker room. Ew, get a room, you sludge, ugh. Leanne practically shouted as loudly as we walked past the locker room. She was truly disgusted by what she saw. Man, this girl is too much. She was very open-minded, and I kind of liked that about Leanne. I needed people like that in my life. So, that is all of it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the first chapter of Forbidden Attraction. I'm not going to link the link down to this story in the description because it's mad awkward to read it. Not that it has any emotional ties to me anymore, but now I just kind of update it for people who enjoy reading it. If you like that story and you would potentially like me to read a chap the second chapter of the story, definitely comment down below if you'd like me to or if you like these um, story series. If you'd like me to start these story series, leave a comment down below and I will do that. But in this moment in time, it's very late. What time is it? It's 1-4-3, which actually means I love you in mindless behavior language. <laughs> yeah, have a great day, guys. Anyway, peace out. Bye.
and stay flawless.